Yo, Citric here. I'm a challenger Shivana one trick here to show you how I play the champion. Commonly Shivana players only either go AD or AP, but I like to push her flexibility to fill the gaps of the team comp. In this video, we'll be covering both AD and AP in a newer AP Bruiser playstyle. Although this champion does have glaring weaknesses, it may feel a little outdated at times, she's been proven to be a strong carry champion with how much damage she has. I hope you can learn at least one thing from this video. By the way, I've divided the video into different sections, so feel free to jump around. First, let's talk about each build and what they look like. AD Shivana has four mythics that work pretty well on her. Frostfire Gauntlet is the most consistent option. The slow from the item will secure you many kills because Shivana has high damage and lacks crowd control. AD Shivana thrives when she's able to stay in melee range and land many auto attacks. If her team has enough tools to set her up, or the enemies lack the tools to peel her, she can opt for a higher damage build. Stridebreaker is similar to Frostfire as it also provides a slow, but it trades the tankiness for a little more damage and mobility. I tend to only go Stridebreaker in a certain matchups that have too much mobility, requiring you to lock them down. For more damage, Trinity Force is preferred, but if enough enemies are building health, then Divine may be better. For AD Shivana, here are all the items that I would consider. A typical build versus a balanced team looks something like this. Sometimes versus assassin matchups, I will switch the build order and go Frostfire into Bork. When itemizing on AD Shivana, we want to keep a good balance between purchasing damage and survivability. If you want to opt for these other mythics, their typical builds look something like this. Losing the survivability from Frostfire, Sterix becomes a more important item. AP Shivana excels when she's able to hit priority targets with her fireballs. This can be enabled by teammates crowd controls or good vision control to get unsuspecting angles. The options here are Night Harvester and Hextech Rocket Belt. If you're comfortable with actives, grab Rocket Belt for the penetration. Otherwise, grab Night Harvester as you don't need to think much to use the item. For full AP, here are all the items that I would consider. Nasher's Tooth is usually the first item we rush as attack speed helps plenty with Shivana's clear speed. However, this is not a necessity if you're playing into Kaidi matchups where you will not be able to get autos off. A typical build order would look something like this. The stats that we're looking for are Penetration, AP, and Ability Haste. AP Bruiser Shivana finds a balance between the two ends of the spectrum. This build shines when enemies do not have enough damage to take down her defensive stats and gets overpowered by her base damage and high AP ratios. Defensive items will enable her to utilize all abilities to deal damage and stick on top of a target. For AP Bruiser, here are all the items that I would consider in this build. A typical build order would look something like this. Usually I like to alternate between tank and damage items. Sonya's Hourglass is always good if you need to be the primary engage. Before we move on from builds, Hybrid can be an option and has seen play in high elo. Simply add a Bork to AP Bruiser or add a Demonic to AD Shiv. I believe Demonic and Brace will get nerfed soon, so beware. Let's talk about rune options. Press the attack is the best keystone for Shivana when she wants to play in melee range. She can easily proc this rune with an auto Q, making her a menace in close range combat. A possible contender is Lethal Tempo. Achieving full value from this rune is inconsistent, which is why PTA is usually just better. Take press the attack on AD builds and AP bruiser. Sometimes you may even go PTA when building Nashers on full AP if there are enough melee champions for you to get good value. For minor runes, take these. If you need tenacity, grab it, otherwise just get the attack speed from alacrity. From my experience, secondary runes are usually up to preference, so I'll show you my favorite options. My favorite secondaries when running PTA as of right now are conditioning and unflinching, or overgrowth if you don't need the tenacity. For a little bit more combat strength, you can also take transcendence and nimbus cloak. If you want a little more early assistance, Grab Magical Footwear and Cosmic Insight. Dark Harvest is the best rune for AP Shivana because the extra burst it provides can help you finish off low health targets. It resets on takedowns and allows for multiple procs and chaining kills in a single teamfight. For minor runes, take these. Once again, secondary runes are usually up to preference. I like to take Transcendence and Gathering Storm for a stronger mid to late game. For some early assistance, you can always grab Magical Footwear and Cosmic Insight or even Alacrity with Coup de Grasse. Try them out and find the ones that fit your playstyle the best. Let's talk about summoner spells. So when do you take Chilling Smite versus Challenging Smite? From what I've seen, this is usually up to preference. On AP Bruiser, I always go for Red Smite as I get the Frostfire slow early on. 
On AP, I usually go Chilling Smite as it can help you land abilities and also procs Dark Harvest. On AD, I take Red Smite versus Melee Champs and Blue Smite versus Range Champs. For your other summoner spell, Flash is always good. However, Shivana is not as reliant on Flash as other champions unless it's on her AP build. She can take Ignite, Exhaust, or Ghost, and they're all just as viable. On AP Bruiser, I always take Ignite. On full AP, I almost always take Flash. On AD, I like Ignite when playing versus junglers that can heal in a 1v1 such as Warwick, Olaf, and Rengar. Exhaust when I'm playing versus champions that rely on high burst such as Evelyn and Diana. And Ghost when playing versus champions with high mobility. It will help you stick on the targets and escape when needed. Alright, let's get into actual gameplay. For early game preparation, it is crucial that the team watches jungle entrances or the game can go south very quickly. Because we're a mid game champion, we need to secure a stable early game. Here's some good warding spots. Ward the other buff at 115 for a potential level 2, level 3 invade. Ward here for late invades. Otherwise, hold your ward and ward for your teammates before your first recall. After the first recall, grab a sweeper. Depending on what your goal is in the early game, you may choose to start at either red or blue. If possible, go for a full clear. I try to start at red buff because it is the fastest clear for Shivana. Here's some reasons why you might want to start at a particular buff. If you want to get a good leash, if there's a specific lane you want to gank, if there's a jungle matchup you want to path into or away from, if there's a free scuttle on a particular side of the map due to lane prio, if you want to hide which buff you started at, then learn how to do the fastest leashless clear. In the early game, Shivana is looking to be efficient with reaching level 6. This is usually done by focusing on clearing the camps on spawn. Be on the watch out for any waves to catch or push out after a gank as this can expedite the process. Look to do an early dragon during your second clear as Shivana can easily solo a dragon when given the chance. This blast cone spawns between 5 minutes and 5.30 and can help you sneak a dragon. Shivana in the early game fights best when she is able to get the jump on the enemy. If anyone walks into you, it is almost certainly a kill with a full combo and ignite. In this situation, you want to E first and then activate your W then auto Q and chase with the movement speed from W while auto attacking. Let's talk about her abilities. In terms of ability order, I always max E but will take a second level in W at level 4 for better dueling and clear speed. If I'm rushing Bork, first item, then I always max W for the move speed. This allows Shivana to stay in range to auto attack. Her abilities are pretty straightforward, so I'll just be giving some tips on how to use them. Keep in mind, your Q cooldown is reduced by half of a second every time you auto attack. It can come off cooldown faster than you may realize. Dragon Form Q can be used on multiple targets to help maintain Fury in Dragon Form. If you need to stay in a fight in Dragon Form, Q a clump of minions or the Raptors camp for Fury. Dragon Form Q has a bug that sometimes can make you miss your second auto attack. When chasing a target, try to get closer to the target before using Q, because if they get out of your auto range, your second auto attack from Q can actually miss. Sometimes when finishing off a target, you might want to Q instead of auto Q if they have a chance of getting away. What happens is that you only have enough time to get off one auto, so a Q will deal more damage than just one auto. Always try to extend the duration of your W by auto attacking. For example, when you're chasing someone, you can use your W and auto minions in the path to extend the duration. Don't use your W too early. A common mistake Shivana players make is using their W to get to a fight, and then once they jump in, they no longer have the W to chase after the target and they get no damage off. Hold your W if you won't have your W available for the fight. Usually people do not expect the amount of move speed you get from this ability, so a common usage is to act like you're running away to get to the enemy to chase and then turn around, use W and gap close onto the enemies. You can flash during your E channel time to extend the range of your fireball. This can help you reach targets that are out of range or even circumvent people trying to block your fireballs. Try to hold your E if your team has crowd control. Missing your E can reduce your damage by a lot, so try to maximize your chances of hitting it. Your dragon form fireball has a big AoE and if you have the chance, you should always aim to hit multiple targets. When firing your dragon form fireball, Near a wall, try to minimize the area of the fireball in the wall, because the fireball explodes when it hits the aimed spot, it is sometimes better to not directly aim at your target. The ground burn that the fireball leaves behind does almost the same amount of damage as the initial impact, if the target stands in it for the full duration. Make the enemy fight you on this burn if possible. When going for ultimates, know that you're not a Zac and you don't have crowd control to back up your engage. You're squishier than you might think. 
Your arm makes you unstoppable and can be great at mitigating certain CCs and even baiting them out for an easier fight. Your R can also knock people out of most dashes and can interrupt channels. Use your ultimate wisely. When you ult onto people, be careful which direction you E as you cannot fireball on top of yourself. Sometimes you may want to either take a step back or lead with an auto to see which direction they move first. When you're ganking with your ultimate, you usually want to surprise someone by jumping over a wall. These are common gank angles for when people are overextended. These same ulti spots can be used for flanks on the other side. If you have a Frostfire Slow, Stripe Breaker Active, Red Buff, or Chilling Smite, you want to lead with it first. If I'm playing off of Bork Slow, I will always just auto Q first. Pathing during a gank is very important. Shivana can be easily kited, so try to path so that you cut the enemies off. Every little space counts when you play this champion. Sometimes it may not be worth it to go for a kill if it means blowing your ultimate before an objective fight. Keep this in mind and remember Dragon Soul is usually the win condition when playing Shivana Jungle. Let's talk about Fury management. You regenerate 2 Fury per auto, you passively regenerate some Fury depending on your ultimate level, 1 per second at level 6, 1.5 at 11, and 2 at 16. You should always try to queue plants. Upon killing a Gromp, you will receive 20 Fury. Sometimes you will need to build Fury off of a jungle camp by trying to kill it as slowly as possible with only autos and queues. I mainly do this when I sense a counter gank or see an objective coming up while low on Fury. Something I do frequently is save my Gromp for a double ultimate gank. Gank first with your ultimate and then come back after you've regenerated your Fury on your Gromp for a second gank. This can be devastating for the enemies. During a team fight, you might also want to maintain your dragon form. So try to auto attack anything that is in range. Sometimes even getting one extra fireball off can win you the fight. In general, if someone hits an engage like this, then feel free to ultimate or even flash ultimate and unload your combo. The majority of solo queue fights are actually not full on 5v5s, and thus will look something like this where you catch a straggler first, and then you chase people down one by one. AD and AP Bruiser Shivana are exceptional at catching out these single targets because of your long range ultimate plus Frostfire or Bork Slow. Paired with the W movement speed, champions with lower mobility have almost no chance of escaping. Both AD and AP Bruiser Shivana have enough tankiness to play in human form for a bit before jumping in with ultimate. The difference between these two builds is that on AD, your ultimate is commonly used as a gap closer, but AP Bruiser will almost always play for the ultimate damage. Once you ulti, try to finish off the important target with your burst damage. After you get your damage off onto the target, on AD, you're playing mainly around your W cooldown as damage is on your auto attacks and Qs. On AP Bruiser, you're mainly playing around your E cooldown. AP Shivana's team fighting is a little bit different and requires more setup from your team. If priority targets are caught out and crowd controlled, you may burst with your ultimate damage. Commonly on AP Shivana, you will be using your ultimate to disengage and reposition while avoiding CC. Sometimes I will play a bit more aggro in human form to bait out and engage, and an ulti away to safety and throw fireballs from a range. You could also use ultimate to gap close if you find a good opportunity to land a big fireball on multiple targets. Sometimes you may find yourself simply ulting from out of vision to get into dragon form to poke with ease. Remember. Shivana's kit is packed with damage and is best when paired with crowd control and engage on her team. Something that people usually don't think about when they talk about Shivana is her vision control ability. Using one sweeper, she's able to clear out all three wards from the support if you're able to track ward locations correctly. Use a W movement speed to get from ward to ward and use auto queue to kill them. I personally believe my vision control wins me many games while playing Shivana. Last but not least, I want to talk a little bit about ending the game as Shivana. A common ending on AP Shivana looks something like this. Using sweeper and pink wards, you control the vision around the turret you're sieging, ulting out of vision and then landing a crucial fireball onto a priority target. At this point, your team can probably dive and just finish the game. Shivana can also be really good at split pushing as she will delete turrets if you're playing either full AP or the Trinity Force build. With your W movement speed, you can stay relatively safe and maintain immense split pushing pressure as you can pretty much 1v1 anyone. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you made it this far into this long ass video, come join the Discord and I'll give you a special role to prove that you watched the video. Leave any questions down below or come ask me while I'm streaming on Twitch. Hey, see you all next time.